One of the things we wanted, I want, want to address now is a little bit about the Center for Self-Governance. This is the organization, and Bill Ames is with us, the instructor. He'll talk later. But this is the organization that is offering the training tomorrow in the boardroom. You know, Stacy and I have both taken several lev levels of the Center for Self-Governance, and I've even taken some of them more than once. And so what we want to do is share with you our experience and what we gained from this training. And I think it's important to preface this by saying, Stacy and I are purely just volunteers uh, for the Center for Self-Governance. We are not paid by them. We don't hold any official position with them. We're just students of, of their classes. And we do this completely um, out of a love for our country and a concern for our country. You know, it's embarrassing, it's kind of embarrassing for me to admit this, but before I had the CSG training, I knew that we lived in a republic, but I wasn't really sure what that meant. I knew it wasn't a democracy, I knew they were different, and, but I really, believe it or not, I guess it's a public, edu school, public school system I went to. I really didn't know what living in a republic, what it meant, much less did I know how to wield my civic authority and how to practice self-governance. And you know, it seems like our nation right now, we're essentially, it's like we're living in a democracy. And, and our founders, in their wisdom, um, knew that democracies will eventually become mobocracies, and then eventually that will spiral into tyranny. And the reason it seems like we're living in a democracy is we're all just focused on election day and voting, and they're even teaching our children in school that we live in a democracy. So in their wisdom, you know, we, have, we now have a republic, but to keep the republic, citizens need to participate in self-governance. And without this self-governance, you cannot keep a republic. You may re remember the story of Mrs. Powell. In 1787, she was anxiously awaiting as they emerged from the Constitutional Convention. And as, as Benjamin Franklin came out, she said, what kind of government have you given us? A, a monarchy or a republic? And he said, a republic if you can keep it. Now, if you think about that, and how would he expect a woman who doesn't have vote to keep a republic? And it was through self-governance. She, she formed relationships and was able to voice the citizens' interest to elected officials including George Washington. She would have George Washington in her home and it would, after uh, dinner they would go to the parlor and she would discuss with him the issues that she felt were important to the citizens. So she was able to completely influence policy without even voting. And that's part of what self-governance, what we're talking about, and it's still true today, even though that story is from a long time ago, you can still do the same type of thing today. So without this counterbalance of citizen involvement, it's just the natural evolution for governments to grow and grow and become over, corrupt over time. And it's just, it's na it happens everywhere. It's just a natural evolution. So what we were supposed to have in our nation is the citizens counterbalancing that government growth. And we've kind of been um, neglectful and MIA as a society, as a, as a country in that regard, and that's why we have this, so things are so out of whack right now. And you know, it's a complete misconception that you have to hold office in order to have, to have power. In fact, we have found that to be not the case at all. So you, you definitely, um, what you do need to uh, have influence is you need some willingness, training, and a good strategy. You, to learn this uh, Center for Self-Governance techniques, you d definitely don't need any prior experience. In fact, I'm sure Bill will say that the people that have sometimes the most political experience and the most engaging, they've been engaged for a long time, almost have a harder time grasping the concepts. So you don't need any political experience to um, become a, um, to take training through the Center for Self-Governance and find success with it. 
So before CSG, I was using all kinds of different tactics. I was running around doing, oh my gosh, I did all kinds of things. And it was um, didn't seem to have the effect, and I feel like it was a lot of wasted energy looking back on it. But now that I have the training and the strategy, I feel like really are making it, you know, having an impact and can influence policy. And somehow the whole process has been flipped. Um, because of our neglect, the people are responding to the government and it, instead of the government responding to the people. And so what we have learned through our training is to be on offense instead of perpetual defense. And later on, Stacy and I will discuss some of the ways specifically that some of the students here, Center for Self-Governance students here in the upstate, have used these skills to, to be on offense and to get it back in balance where the, resp where the government is responding to the citizens, rather us following the government. One last thing I want to mention about the Center for Self-Governance. It is completely unique in that it is not a top-down organization. They feel that the citizens know their political subdivision the best and know what their, what's their state and county needs. So what they do is they allow the citizens to decide what's important to them and then empower them to go after it. I hope you will consider this innovative program that we'll be offering tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the boardroom. Thank you. I think you heard a common theme in the speakers we've had so far this morning. Um, you know, their full-time jobs are to try to represent us well in some capacity in government or policy making. And what they're all asking for is for engagement from citizens. You heard um, Curtis Loftus say, learn about these things and, and do something, find it online. And we completely agree, which is why we host this conference, why we try to form relationships with our friends and our neighbors, people we go to church with, our kids go to school with. And uh, you know, Diane mentioned it at the onset of the, of the day, and I'm gonna read it to you. It's Article One, Section One of the South Carolina State Constitution. All power, all political power is vested in and derived from the people only. So how many f feel like that's the truth? Does it, I mean, does it really feel like it? Do you feel powerless when, you're, when you show up at a voting booth and you feel like what, you're, what you really want isn't gonna happen or that's the only place that you can have any influence. And this time of year and this election cycle especially, I mean, there's, there's so much emotion there and we are all certain that our candidate is the guy who's gonna rescue us from the condition that we find ourselves in. And there is no person who is the answer the answer is in all of you who are willing to be here on a Saturday instead of out in the spring lovely weather in South Carolina. People who are willing to form relationships with lawmakers because the, the definition of politics, if you ask Siri, it will say social relations involving strategy to gain authority. And we don't get that authority if what we do is show up angry, show up and vote and go home, you know, rally around a candidate who you get elected to office and then say, I've done my part, it's all up to you now, you better do your job the way I have elected you to do. We have to continue to be involved in these relationships with these lawmakers and with our fellow citizens to get everybody to do a little piece of the work. In any sort of, of setting, a team makes all the difference and everybody in the room here and everybody in the state can be a part of a team. One of the things that Diane mentioned that uh, you know, we want to flip it around where we are driving what's going on in our government, that's the nature of a republic and it seems we have forgotten that. It's, it's not an easy thing to stay engaged. Thomas Jefferson said the qualifications for self-government in society are not innate. They're the result of habit and long training and that's why we're here today.
We are so grateful for the organization out of Tennessee, the Center for Self-Governance, and the instructors are truly selfless people who, who do so much work and so much travel away from their family and friends. I always feel like we can host classes ad infinitum. We continue to promote what they're doing. We, we could do anything for them. It would not be enough to thank them appropriately for the hard work that they continue to do.